hello. In this video, we are going to look at the point group symmetries of derivatives of cyclooctatetraene. To see the base compound, please check the link in the end screen. The first such derivative that we're going to look at in this video is 1, 2, dichloro cyclooctatetraene. And we see a geometry optimized picture of this molecule here. So we notice that two adjacent hydrogen atoms have been replaced with chlorine. In this side view, we see the structure of the 1,2-dichloro derivative, and we see, represented by the red line, the mirror plane. And it turns out for this molecule that the only symmetry operations are this mirror plane and the identity operation. Therefore, this molecule has the point group symmetry CS, where S stands for Spiegel, the German word for mirror. Next, we look at the 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrachloro derivative. And by arranging the molecule in this way, it will make it easier to see that it has a C2 rotation. And the rotation axis goes perpendicular to your eyes and perpendicular to the screen. Following, we'll see a series of representations of the movement. Because the only non-trivial symmetry operation for this molecule is the C2 rotation, it belongs to the somewhat uncommon point group C2. Here is a top-down view of the 1, 2, 5, 6 tetrachloro cyclooctatetraene. We see that this tetrachloro derivative also has a C2 operation around the little circle in the center. That is where the axis is going to be. So this has a C2 rotation, but in the plane of the board rather than perpendicular to it. Again, from the top view, we notice that this molecule has two mirror planes, one shown by the red line, and one shown by the blue line. Here is a side view of the molecule. From the side view, we can see with the red line, one of the two vertical mirror planes in this molecule. Since this molecule has a C2 high-order rotation axis plus two vertical mirror planes, 
It therefore belongs to the symmetry point group C2V, one of the most commonly encountered groups. Our next derivative is the 1357 tetrachloro derivative, shown here in a top down. Here is uh, a side view of the same molecule. It can look confusing. The one thing to notice is how in some positions, the chlorine is closer to you than the hydrogen atom. It kind of eclipses it. Whereas on the other hand, the hydrogen is actually closer to you than the chlorine atom is. This molecule has a P2 rotation that goes through the circle in the center. One might imagine that it also has a C4 rotation, but we'll see in just a moment that the uh, carbon atoms will not line up if we rotate just by 90 degrees. Now to the tricky part. You would notice, if we could also look for, uh, from a side view as well, that the carbons in the red boxes are in the same plane as each other, and the green boxed carbons are in the same plane as each other. But the red rectangle and the green rectangle carbons are not in the same plane as each other. Therefore, if you rotate by 90 degrees, the red carbons would not line up with the green carbons. However, if you do the rotation and then follow it by a mirroring in the plane of the screen, they would line up. And we recognize that this C4 followed by a horizontal mirror is an exactly a S4 rotation. Therefore, because the high order rotation axis is an S4, plus we have no mirror planes in this particular molecule, we have the rather unusual point group S4 for this particular uh, cyclooctatetrene derivative. Our final derivative is the 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 hexachloro derivative of cyclooctatetraene. And we notice, looking at a top down view, that this molecule has a C2 high order rotation axis. This molecule has no other rotational axes and no mirror planes, so therefore it belongs to the point group C2. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, have a good one.